Um, hello, so continuing on weekly contest 387, this week's weekly contest, the um, third problem, minimum operation to write letter Y on a grid. This one is pretty unique. Basically, you have N by N grid, um, and we are guaranteed that the, the value of N is odd, and the grid values can be either 0, 1, or 2, okay? And... We have uh, this concept of Y, which is literally just the letter Y written on the matrix, like this on the grid. Um, and a cell belongs to that letter if diagonal starting from the top left cell and ending at the center cell of the grid. So if that cell is anywhere, so if you look at Y, so basically what this means is that if it's anywhere from the top left cell, which would be here, to the center, which would be here, so all of these basically, um, if it's anywhere here, then it's part of Y. So that's for this part here. And from the top right, which is this position here, to the center, which is this position here. So that's basically everything here. So if it's anywhere there, then it's part of Y. And then the other, the last part is if it's anywhere in this vertical line, from the center to the end, the bottom end of the grid. So this would be our grid. Um, then it's also part of the y. So basically, that's just description of any point that is in the y, um, in this y, uh, y letter, right? Um, and so that's the just the definition of what which cell is on the letter y of the grid. And then it says a letter y is written on the grid only if we consider that the letter is actually written on the grid only if all the values belonging to y are equal so all of them need to be equal and all of the other values to th other than not not in the letter y need to also be equal between each between them so you have the values on y need to be equal and the other values need, need to be equal between each other um, and then all the values in letter y should have a value different from the value in the other letters okay so let's say if all the values on y are of the value one then all the other ones need to have either value zero all of them or value two all of them okay so that's the 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 condition here now the the goal is to return the minimum number of operation we need to write the letter y and letter y is written only if these three conditions are valid okay um now, what are the operations? Well, operation basically is changing the value f for any cell from any of these three values to any other value. So from 0 to 1, from 1 to 0, from 1 to 2, 2 to 1, you get the idea, okay? Um, so if we take a look at this first example, the Y needs to be written here. So we can change this one to 1, okay? And we can change this one to 0 because it's outside, so we need it to be... Um, let me just make sure I keep the values visible. So this is our y. So we can we need to change the, these this to one so that the values are equal on y, and we need to change this to zero and this to zero so that all the other ones are equal to zero. Zero different than one, so that's also good. So that's you can see here we did three operations, so we just did three. So that's the idea. If we look at the constraint, we have up to 49. Um, so 49 by 49. So not too big. Um, so let's see how we can tackle it. Um, okay, so this problem is actually going to be pretty manual. Um, so just a warning there. But um, let me just show step by step how we can do it. But it's going to be purely just manual calculation. So for example, what are a couple of things we need to find? Well, the problem here mentions a lot the center of the cell of uh, the center cell of the grid. So we need to know what is the center cell of the grid so that we can accurately say when should this diagonal on the left stop, and when should this diagonal on the right stop, okay, and when should the vertical line stop. So this center cell is important. So how do we calculate that center cell? Well, let's take an example. If you take a look here. This is the center cell, 1, 1, position 1, 1, 1, okay? So one example is its position for n equal to 3. Uh, this is 3 by 3, right? So for that case, it was 1, 1, okay? If you look here, uh, this is where n equal to 
so this one were n equal to mm, I think three five yeah five the center cell is this one right and so this is zero one two zero one two so it's two by two so it's two two okay so how do we find the value here right of the center cell well the thing to think about um, is you can see it's definitely in the center so it's the same coordinates x and y because we have an n by n matrix but what is what is 2 here for 5 right so let's, let's see so n equal to 5 if you print n divided by 2 then what, what that gives you that's That's going to be 2, okay? So that already tells you this needs to be n divided by 2. Now, if you do a similar thing for 3, it should be 1. And it is 1, okay? So this tells you basically this here, the center cell, is n divided by 2. n divided by 2, okay? Zero, one, two. 0, 1, 2, okay? So that's the center position. Now, how do we know the... How do we define the the y positions? Well, let's divide them. Let's calculate this left positions, right positions, and the center vertical positions. Let's do them separately, okay? So how do we do the vertical ones? Let's, uh, sorry, just the left ones. So let's call them letter left. Y letter left positions. Okay, so how do we define those? Well, if you take a look here, it's 0, 0, and then 1, 1, and then, and then stop, right? It's just these two because the other one is the center. If you take a look at the other side, 0, 1, 2 here, 3, 4. So it's 4, 0. And then 3, 1, right? Those are the two positions. Okay? So what's sort of in common here? Well, first of all, for this here, it's I, it's x, x. So it's the same value position, x, x, from 0 until you reach the center position. We don't include the center position. So it's x, x from 0 to cx, cx by cx. I mean just the... Um, the x coordinates for the center but you stop before the center okay so that's for the left side so for the left side we know um, it's xx right for x in the range of um, the range of um, just before cx right we, for example here we do it from 0 to 2 we want to stop at 2 so 0, 0, and 0, 1. Okay, so that's the left side. Now what about the right side? <coughs> so the right side is actually pretty similar, except um, if you look here, this was 4, 0, and the other one was 3, 1. So what's the difference? Well, 4 is just, um, it's just 5 minus 1. Okay? Okay. Uh, so this is just 5 minus 1. And 3 is um, 5 minus 2. Okay? So what, what are these? This is basically just 5 is the value of n because we have 5 columns and 5 rows. So it's just n minus 1 minus the value of x. And x being starting from 0 to cx again. Okay? That's also just how you calculate the... Uh, the the diagonal from this side, okay. So this is going to be just n minus x. You can you can cal do the calculation by hand to see that this is true. X and then same thing. We stop at the center. Okay, we want to stop at the center. But we also want to start from where? We want to start from the last position. Where is the last position? Well, four here. N minus one. So this should be n minus one. Um. <coughs> sorry n minus 1 
and um, we do it for CX and we decrement and we want to stop at the value before CX so we, sh we, we just put this CX here like this um, okay so that's the Y now we need the central positions so let's call them vertical so those are basically this one here just these well we know that starts from CX CY so the center and then goes all the way down to the bottom so each time we just increment the row and we increment the row until the last row and so it's just X um, and then for Y um, so let's actually just define center so CX CY we said it's N divided by 2 N divided by 2 okay and so it's going to be just X Y and um, the so this is going to be CX uh, sorry X but the Y is fixed because it's the same one for all of them the center here um, and then X changes from the CX row 0 1 2 so CX row um, all the way to um, end right and what is the end end is just N right and that's pretty much it um, okay so we do that like this <coughs> Sorry. Um, so we have the now we have the Y letter positions now we need to find the re the other positions well the other position is everything except the Y letter so let's just get all the positions uh, and subtract these now to make this more efficient we can just use a set uh, for these values so we use a set and then we get all the positions in the matrix so how to get all the positions well all positions is basically just um, x y for x in the range of n and for y in the range of n now I forgot to define n so we need to just to do that here this is a grid is n by n so this is the length of the grid and now we want this to be a set as well so that we can subtract now other positions is going to be just the rest so all positions so basically this one minus the uh, y letter positions okay so how do I define the y letter positions let's just because here we have the parts of the y letter positions so how do we do that well it's just all of them together so let's just union union them together um, using a set so it's just going to be this union the left one union the right one okay there might be a simpler way to write this but for now I'm just going for readability here um, okay so now that we have all the positions now the problem becomes how do we determine these conditions where basically the values of y need to be equal the values of the other values need be to be equal between them and then the values of y need to be different from all the others it's going to be tricky um, the ideal way is we find for example five positions from five cells from y letter are maybe zero and then two are one so it's better to change the, the two but then the problem is what if also for the, the other ones the non y ones what if we also have um, maybe six ones and then three zeros okay so in there also it's more optimal to change the three zeros but now we have the same values for the y letter and the non y letter so it just becomes complicated if you try to do it to optimize by the number so what, what's easier you just try all all variables or all possibilities because the only values possible are zero one and two so let's just not worry about which one is more optimal let's just try for the y letter try all th three possibilities for the others try all the three possibilities and just make sure that y letter the value of the y letter is different than other and see how many operations it will take us to make the y letter e equal to th the value we choose here and how many operations it will take us to make sh sure other is equal to the other one and see 
the to that's the total number of operations and just pick the best which is the minimum okay so it's, when something is complicated just think about doing it differently and doing it differently here means just try all possibilities so how do we do that well first we need to have just keep track of the best oper number of operations we have so far um, and since we are looking for the minimum let's just put a really, a really large value and this is what we'll return at the end okay so now we want to just try all of them so let's call that y letter value and let's consider try all possibilities so zero up to three so this would be zero one and two and do a similar thing for the other let's call them the other value okay and or rest value the values of the rest but we want to make sure for this condition here that they are different so we want to only calculate the number of operations if they are different so if they are different we want to calculate the number of operations so operations to make the y letter positions equal to y letter the others positions values equal to rest val and we get the number of operation we'll define that function in a minute and we want to check we want to take the ma the min right that's what we want the min number of operations for each of these cases okay so this is the skeleton of what we need now we just need to define this um, this function so this function gives us two things that we have two parameters the, the value of the that we need for the y letter and the values that we need for the rest okay so how do we know how many operations we need well any letter in y that is different than any cell in y on the y um, positions that has a value different than this one we will need to change it so we can just go through all of them and any of them that has a value different than this one we add it to the number of operations we have and so first we need the, to know um, the y letter different those that um, basically are don't have this value okay so how do we check that well we just check the position okay if it's different than this then that means we need to change it and we need to check for all the y letter positions so this one and we want to get the how many and so we take just the sum so these are the number of operations we need to change the numbers of y letter different we need to also check the rest that are different so rest different that's going to be very similar except we are going to check rest val and we are going to check the let's call them rest positions here uh, okay and the number of operations is just going to be the the sum of the two these are the ones that we need to change to these values so it's going to be this and this okay um, and let's run this um, looks like we didn't define CX so CX needs to be n divided by 2 same thing for CY because that's the center okay let's run looks good let's submit and this gets accepted okay so that's pretty much it it's it's pretty straightforward but you just need to be careful when calculating the coordinates um, yeah so that's pretty much it for this problem thanks for watching and see you on the next one Bye.